Yep. Cool. Okay. Ready? Yeah, sure. Anytime. Okay, so I'll present you Kill. <laughs> <laughs> So the answer to this question is actually just one, but one, but you need a lot of other resources because one iOS developer apparently is not enough to do this. Okay, so basic, um, a bit of background, I work at Singapore Tourism Board in this team called Technology Exploration. We're kind of like a government rapid prototyping lab thing. Uh. So you mess around with a lot of like new tech, trying to figure out new ways of uh, doing things for travel and tourism. So this was actually a project for trying to expand how we do storytelling re uh, related to Singapore food to our visitors entering Singapore. So yeah, basically we started playing around with AR kit and I think we started running into the first problem right after we started. Okay, so basically Apple came out with AR kit during the WWE scene and all that, right? We started playing around with the demos and all that. It was quite fun to mess around with it. Then eventually we hit a roadblock. So at the starting initial phase, it was actually very simple. So even within Xcode, right, if you just go to the create new project, you, there's already an AR project template that's readily available. It even comes with a preloaded model that you can use. And the moment you run it in simulator, you'll just get a blank screen because there's no camera. But if you run it on the device, straight away the model appears. So it's like no effort to actually load a simple model into an AR environment. But then that's kind of where we start to hit the roadblock, because we don't want to use the pre-made models that Apple gives, right? We want to do our own. So uh, this is just like a small video of Apple's own AR demo app. Basically, they already have a bunch of stuff inside like car, bus, lamp, chair, etc. And it works very nicely. You don't actually need to do a lot of things. And you can even review the entire project. You'll see all the code that they use. It actually makes it very easy for you to do your own like beginner AR kit project uh, if you're doing it like your own hobby app. So basically, the basics of it is very simple. Basically, you just need an AR scene view. So AR kit can use either Sprite kit or Scene kit, which are more popular among the iOS game developers. Um, but in this case, I'm using Scene kit to load a 3D object into my real world environment. So if you're using Sprite kit, you can do it for just like normal 2D objects. Uh. The code itself is relatively straightforward. You just set up the session. You set up the, uh, the usual delegates and such. And objects actually get loaded into your scene via a scene kit system that, called, that they use this, called, uh, this thing called node. So basically every object is like a bunch of nodes that you actually load from into the scene. Uh. And it's actually quite simple to just go online and grab random models and try and start sticking it in. So this is kind of where we started our process. We, like, we took the demo, then we started going online looking on like TurboSquid or Free3D.com. Tried to look around for like usable models and we just stick it into our app. So we started like the nice Pokemon one, we started like some pizza one. For the pizza one, we realized mm, maybe not so useful because it's very flat, it's 2D, you can't tell that it's a 3D object. But for this one, it was really nice, you could actually walk around the entire object, go up close. AR kit has kind of like a depth sensing kind of technology, so if you put it at a certain size on the table, it will stay at the size no matter how you move your camera. So that's one of the nice things about it. But of course now, the question comes back to what we originally intended to do. So how, do, how does a developer actually serve a plate of chili crab, right? I want to start making my own 3D models to put into my AR kit project. So there's actually this technology called photogrammetry. It was a little bit more popular a couple years ago when 3D printers were like kind of trending. So actually, um, Autodesk has a very nice product called 123 Catch where you can take a whole series of pictures, like 360 degrees around an object, and it'll take those pictures and try and generate a 3D model for you. But sadly, Autodesk kind of discontinued the software. So we started looking around for alternative resources. So we actually approached certain studios and asked like, hey, can you guys do like a photorealistic model from scratch? And then they'll like start to be a bit puzzled. How do they take this uh, picture that you give them and make the 3D model, right? And then you started realizing that they were also trying to use software that you could purchase off the shelf. So we looked into this thing called 3DF Zephyr. So it's similar to 123D, uh, the Autodesk app, where you also just pass it a bunch of pictures and it'll try to generate the rest of the model for you. Um, but didn't really have a budget, so we kind of looked into the options that they provided us. Like there's like a free version, there's a light version that actually has a trial. And everything else was kind of like way out of reach, so we didn't consider those. 
So for the free version, the limitations was actually the number of pictures you can use to generate your 3D model. Then the light version, of course, you can do like 10 times more pictures, but uh, there's only like a 14 day trial before they make you pay. So we decided to go with the free version. So we started out with the free version. So basically we all went down to Jumbo Seafood. So there's like this bunch of developers there. We bought chili crab. <laughs> then we started taking pictures of the food. And Jumbo Seafood has a table that is revolving, right? So we were like, hey, since I'm supposed to take 360 shot, instead of walking around, why don't we just like put it on burst mode and spin the table? And then we took like about 100 shots. So, okay, then now I got my photos. Then I kind of came back to the software, right? So sadly, this software is only available on Windows, so I had to boot camp, but never mind. Small, small, small matter. And it actually takes you to the, through the whole process quite seamlessly. It's actually not that difficult. There's a very nice wizard that will take you through the whole process. Basically, there are four steps to generating a 3D model. It generates a dense point cloud. So dense point cloud is kind of like it finds all the edges in the a photo to kind of determine which one is like the 3D object. It's because there's so many reference points, right? So it kind of generates like a whole cloud of all these pictures surrounding this thing, and then it'll kind of generate the object. Then after that, you'll start to map out the surfaces. Then you'll create the mesh, the polygon mesh. Then finally, you'll try and create a texture to cover over the whole thing. So if you go through the wizard, right? From our learning point, it was actually to skip the texture portion first and let, let the surface generate so that you can clean up the picture before doing the textures. So what we do is we only select the first two in the wizard, then we whack all our pictures inside, basically throw the whole folder in, then of course it will pop up a little error because it's the free version. It says, okay, only you can do 50 pictures, right? So what we do is we just we kind of alternated the photos and deleted half of them. So you still get a very good variety of like uh, about 50 pictures uh, for the whole chili crab. Then, it actually does uh, calibrations depending on your camera. So it detects from the EXIF inside your every photo to determine the camera that was used. And it tries to calibrate accordingly in terms of things like uh, camera orientation, etc. So if you have a mix of pictures from portrait or landscape, it actually auto-corrects as well, so it's not an issue. Then, yeah, going through most of the settings for each of the steps that you're doing, like the dense point cloud, sparse point cloud, surface, etc. But basically, we didn't really do a lot of tweaking. You can tweak if there are issues later on, but for the most part, usually if the pictures are okay, the defaults are fine. So we started letting it run, and it took like a good at least an hour, if not more. So if you run the trial version with like 100 pictures or more, it can take like 2-3 hours. If you have a PC with an NVIDIA card, then it'll run a lot faster, but because you're running on a MacBook, it doesn't have an NVIDIA card, so there's no hardware acceleration. <coughs> But once it's done, the final product is kind of nice. This was generated from like a whole series of photos and it actually came out with a pretty good uh, 3D object. So what we did is, it kind of comes through with the table and all that, right? We want to clean all those up before we export the final version. So it comes with some pre-made tools to basically select polygons and start to clear up your picture. So we did the selection, deletion, and then let it run the textures one last time. So this one will be running the textured mesh as the last step. And the final product is actually pretty reasonable. So it's not exactly perfect, like professionally done, but for hobby app or for like a, a proof of concept prototype, it kind of met our expectations. Like we, could, we had a very reasonable thing to showcase already. So now comes the part where we want to export it to something that Xcode supports. So thankfully, Xcode actually has built-in support. Already, Syncit has built support for this uh, object file, OBJ. So we exported to that uh, file format. Then, after that, you can actually just drag and drop and dump it straight into your model assets folder in your Xcode project. And it will load up fine. But you'll notice like, there's a lot of other problems that we have to start cleaning up now. For example, the orientation and also the scale. So if I ran the project now, right, what you get is this huge giant plate in the middle of nowhere and it's like rotated. So we have to go and like start cleaning up the positioning and all that. Uh. For the scale of the actual thing, right, um, right now I'm using a scale of 0 0.04 throughout the entire object. So there isn't really a hard gauge to the number. So sometimes it depends on the surface you're detecting. So there can be differences, like if it detects this plane not as accurately, the, project could, the object could appear smaller or larger. 
But so far, we found that a relatively good cage is around 0 0.04, but it also depends on the original model size. Then, the other thing is about the positioning. If it's not flat on that uh, base that you see inside the uh, scene kit view, right? The scene kit editor view. It also has problems like it'll be like floating or it may be very too high and it's completely out of the camera view when you're using the actual app. So yeah, we kind of took the Apple AR kit demo app, we kind of overlaid it with our own UI, then we plugged in this model and then, oh, okay, we had a, a nice little food discovery app. Uh, yeah, but we wanted to take it a little bit further as well right, and start playing around with other things. So I kind of went to eat McDonald's. So this is actually a mix spicy. Uh, basically, this is the version that's using the trial. So I use about, I think, over 100 pictures. And these pictures were taken with an iPhone. So you don't even need to use an SLR. Your phone is actually good enough. So although this is iPhone 10 quality picture, so maybe a bit higher. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mentioned the origin position could be a problem. So for this particular model, I think there may have been uh, pieces that were left behind in when I exported it, but I didn't clean it up enough. So when I imported it in Xcode, I found that my origin point was like very far away because there was probably leftover stuff that I didn't clean up properly. So they all got exported together. So in this case, yeah, probably you want to check through your entire model inside the 3D app Zephyr and clean it up nicely before exporting it to Xcode. Because once it's here, it's a bit hard to edit all those things. But in my case, I kind of already rebooted back to Mac, so I didn't want to bother going back to finish this up. Uh. But yeah, um, the, there, uh, there's a recommendation in one of the tutorials online that uh, between the object file that you have, the .obj file, and importing it into Xcode, what they actually do is they use Blender, which you can run on your Mac, to do the cleanup and fixing the orientation and all that instead of trying to do it within either 3 d file or inside Xcode directly. Yeah. So usually what they do is, regardless of what 3D models you find online, whether it's from TurboSquid or Free3D or any of the other uh, open source <coughs> ones, they do recommend you put it through Blender one time to clean up the textures and to clean up the origin point and any other like dirty data that you have. So the textures is actually an issue. So later on I can show you something from my phone directly where I have a model that I grabbed online, but none of the textures show up in Xcode because they don't map over to SyncKit perfectly. Other issues that we run into would be plane detection. So, uh, I guess most people when they use ARK, right, they kind of expect that when you run it, you kind of just want to point and it should just appear straight away or something like that. But it actually takes a while for it to detect a flat horizontal surface that it can project your uh, image on. But this detection can take a while sometimes, or in worst case, it may not even work well. So in certain environments, we noticed that it didn't work as well as other environments. So for example, we had a completely plain white table with a spotlight on the ceiling, and it had a lot of problems trying to detect this as a surface. So you see a lot of like jumpy effects and all that. And then, when we moved over to the wooden surface, it detected perfectly and it was very smooth running. So yeah, this is one of the things that we started having to consider as well. So over here, actually, I tried it earlier as well. On this red carpet, it barely even works properly, so it's quite jumpy and all that. Later on, I can show you guys on my phone. Um, yeah, then the last issue that we had is when I started this project, right, I was not using this iPhone yet. I was exactly using my iPhone 6S and it was horribly laggy. So. I would recommend only 7 and above. Anything below that, even though it supports ARKit technically, it barely runs well. So yeah. Then I think one of the coolest thing about this ARKit is that um, when you start sitting back and realize that you can put 3D objects into your environment, you can start to like maybe start to think a little bit bigger because it doesn't have to be like an object they can put on the table like what we did, like a 3D crab. And it doesn't have to be uh, like the IKEA kind, right? Chair, sofa, etc. You can kind of go a little bit further. So what some people have done, if you have seen some of the demos for the ARK one where there's this doorway and they're looking through the doorway, what they actually do is, because it's still a scene kit environment like a game, they can actually cast an entire large cube into that space and it's a self-contained environment that you can step into. So there's this little uh, video that I can show you where it kind of generates like a little cave or a room 
and you can actually step into that environment and step back out. And it runs very nicely because actually the camera is still running, so it knows where you're facing, it knows your orientation, but you're inside this 3D environment. So there's a lot of potential here for you to do a lot of cool things. Uh. And this is totally on GitHub. Like, this is not my project. <laughs> <laughs> did not do this, but planning to do further. So yeah, what we did was we also used something like this, and you, train, you can start casting things like other countries, then maybe you can do like some trip overseas or something like that. Yeah. Uh, do you start that line in case? Yeah. That's why you can generate your own assets. <laughs> Huh. Cool. Okay. Let me show you some of the stuff that we did. Um, cause, so this is like the food one. So normally I would kind of... Oh, this might get a bit motion sickness. Okay, you see that little red square, right? It kind of just changed yellow. So we use this like kind of like a debug visualization to confirm that the plane detection is smooth. So if it's the red jumpy square, right, then we will recommend you not loading the model into the screener versus this version where it's yellow and it's a perfect square. So now if I select the thing, it should pop up quite nicely. Uh, yeah, it's a bit dark, but you can really go like up close and see it straight into the model. Oh. You can try and grab the spoon, but you will not be able to grab it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is one of the things that we can do. Uh, we kind of added on the play button to play some sounds and all that, lah, but not very useful. Oh, my mic is muted. Never mind. Yeah, but for the other stuff, um, not this one, this one. So this is Apple's demo app, right? You can, okay, wait. Yeah, you see this jumpy square thing? So it can't really detect, can you? Let's wait for this. Okay, I think this should be fine. Yeah, can kind of go really up close and see it. So, there's a lot of nice things about the 3D object within an AR environment. Uh, it's kind of facing the other way. So, if you wish you can just use your phone and look in. Um, that's one of the things we were also exploring, whether we can do it multi, uh, like kind of like multi-party. So, maybe same app on two guys, but they can see they're joined in the same position, right? But we found that it didn't work very well because the plane detection from my phone and his phone are kind of different planes. So Apple shows you this uh, very nice game called Machines. I don't have the game, so I can't show it to you. But when they demo it at WWC Machines, right, it's a multiplayer game, kind of like Dota with that one lane thing. But each player actually has his own environment, so they could just as well be on different tables. They're not actually looking at the exact same 3D <coughs> skate at the exact same position. So they could be like slightly different positions. Uh. Then I guess the cool one is this one. Oops. Mm. Okay, this one is not really detecting the play. Maybe I can show you guys outside later on if you want to play with it. No, I think it's the texture of the carpet is too red and smooth. <laughs> not enough differentiation. But yeah. Oh, actually, it kind of works here. But I can't walk through the table. <laughs> But uh, yeah, oh. there should be a doorway somewhere. Oh, oh no. yeah, yeah, I can't really walk through that. But yeah, I think you can kind of get the idea. So this is actually a pretty fun thing to play with. And you can do quite a lot of things. Like this version, we did a full environment using photos. So this one, right, uh, once it loads, this is what they call a skybox. So it's like six pictures, I think. So like top, bottom, left, right, all around you. Like. Six pictures and you can create like a 3D environment. If you don't look up, you can see the square. Uh, but if you don't look up, it's actually quite nice. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, basically we were playing around and toying around with all these concepts and it's actually quite fun. Uh, 
actually, I think that's the end of my session. Do I have anything else? <laughs> yeah, actually that's it. <laughs> that was my last slide. Uh, but if you guys want to play with these or get any of like the links to any of the projects that I toyed around with, most of them are open source projects on GitHub that you can already find their resources to. It. So it's actually quite okay. Then you can come and like holler me, I'll give you the links. <laughs> yeah. Highly recommend iPhone 10 to run the AR. So far it's the one that ran the best. Because in office we have seven, we have ten, we have six, six is totally cannot. Hmm? <laughs> iPad can, but the camera view is very large. It's very awkward. Do you have any questions for Gil? Yes. Hi. Have you tried doing any animation? Animation also works. Um, there's actually a tutorial online that sh basically it's scene kit, right? So if your model has built in animations, you can use it directly inside the thing as well. Because it's basically the same scene kit as the one you use for game development. If you put it inside the AR environment, it will also run the animations. If you have, uh, I don't actually have any animated models, so I can't show you. But yeah, they work the same. Yeah. Can you have multiple surfaces? So your phone could be tracking the ground and also the desk, and then have yeah, the models jumping from one? Technically, to yes. In the demo that Apple showed, they can detect multiple planes. Mm -hmm. So I think some of the games that they have do jump from surface to surface. But I, find, I found it a little bit harder to track the two separately. So I have not actually tested it out myself yet. So the market stuff is closed. Like if you're looking like out the window, uh -huh. um, you've got flat surfaces on buildings but they're far away. Does that work at all? Do they output? So far, as far as I've tested, not really. What they do actually for that, so there's actually a project that uses um, location and map, so you kind of like look out in the general direction, you use your compass I think to get a heading, and then they kind of project labels over the buildings in the distance, but, yeah, but it's still like sprite kit rather than, yeah, it doesn't really do like long distance, I think you still have to be within your environment, because it does try to measure the distance between objects. Can, you can program it to like receive tap and all that, it's possible. You can detect a uh, tap on your UI and then you try and see if it matches up with the scene kit node and then you can try to get it to react to something. So, so far most of it what they do is, uh, let me open that again. <laughs> Oops, quick turn back. Well, if it loads, but if not, later I can show you. But basically, actually, my food plate, you can move it around. I think the Apple one, you can also like uh, stretch it larger and smaller as well if you need to. The, if I'm not wrong, the IKEA AR app also does the same thing. You can actually start to like reposition around your house and all that. So it's interactive. Yeah, but it's on the screen, right? Yeah, it's on the screen now. It's not going to generate a real chili crab in front of you, sorry. No, it's in like, you know, there's a chili crab in like. Ah uh, no, 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 you can't do that. That one you can't. That one's a bit harder. Mm -hmm. I think you can try to pull it off by detecting your hand, but I have not really tried. Can you detect uh, face? Face can, that's why they're using ARP now for Snapchat, but I think with this phone, the iPhone 10, so they can do the uh, masking thing. But a lot of uh, camera like snow or the existing one doesn't really use it. I restarted it because my plane detection doesn't restart very well. Didn't code it accordingly. <laughs> yeah, so you can keep kind of oops, move it around. <laughs> yeah. It kind of moves around now. It does detect your tap. And right now, the only thing coded is for moving. Yeah. Yeah, see you. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's all. Oh, thank you. Wait, you scan the chili crab, right? Does it give you the dimension of chili crab? No, you still have to adjust accordingly. So the 3 d FI doesn't do the dimensions for you. Any other questions? Yeah. Can you override the plane detection methods so that if you want to design an app, for example, to look down on the streets, um, you could detect your own patterns? I think you much? can do it without plane detection. You can still put in a 3D object. But without the depth sensing, it's harder to place the object at a correct scale. So the plane detection helps you because it can actually determine, like say, the distance from this point of the table to that end. It actually measures that distance quite accurately. So that's why there are like AR kit, Google apps, and floor plan apps right now. Any more questions? If not, then... STB removed. Uh, well, it's a prototype now, but at some point in future, it could be go into a live product. So they're working on the AR kit. We are working on the AR part. I don't know if there are any plans to make it live yet. If there are, it'll be quite cool. Uh. Then next time you go to Hawker Center, you can see the chili crab before you order. <laughs> Uh, if, uh, Xcode uses it actually okay. So Xcode uses a proprietary thing called Syncit object, right? So it's .scn, but it also supports Colada and uh, .obj file. So most of your Blender, Maya, all that can export in either of those. Then from those you can put it in the Xcode. But if you want to do further manipulation, right? Then it's better to just convert it in Xcode back to Syncit. Then it'll be easier for you to manipulate. When you, when you convert. From so far, it's about the same. It maintains, so it should be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? It's not. Cool. Thank you. You want to.